This is video podcast 40 from learningradiology.com, GI Imaging, Differential Diagnoses, with content submitted by Susan Summerton, MD. This is part one of two parts. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. This podcast is designed to be used as either an audio-only podcast, a video-only podcast, or both. These differentials are not intended to be all-inclusive. They are designed as an aid for you to remember a few of the most important causes for each of the findings that will be shown. Consult a textbook for all-inclusive differentials. How to use this presentation? First, a case is shown as an unknown. Identify the differential that the case exemplifies. Use the pause control on your computer or MP3 player. The title of the differential is on the next slide. In this case, it's anterior mediastinal masses. Again, use the pause control. The next slide will reveal the differential diagnosis. And the last slide reveals the diagnosis of the original case. Ready to begin? This is the first differential. The differential is multiple esophageal ulcers. There are four causes. They are reflux esophagitis, infectious esophagitis, such as herpes or HIV, drug-induced esophagitis, and Barrett's esophagus. This is the next differential. The differential is of a solitary esophageal ulcer. There are two causes. The two causes for a solitary esophageal ulcer are HIV esophagitis and CMV esophagitis. This is the next differential. The differential is of a distal esophageal stricture. There are four causes. The four causes of a distal esophageal stricture are peptic or reflux esophagitis, Barrett's esophagus, carcinoma, either gastric extending into the distal esophagus or esophageal carcinoma, and achalasia. This is the next differential diagnosis. The differential is for a mid-esophageal stricture. There are four causes. The four causes of a mid-esophageal stricture are Barrett's esophagus, radiation esophagitis, ingestion of corrosives, or metastases to the mediastinum. This is the next differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis is for esophageal mucosal nodularity. There are four causes. The four causes of esophageal mucosal nodularity are reflux esophagitis, candida esophagitis, glycogenic ancanthosis, and Barrett's esophagus. is the next differential diagnosis. The differential is of a long esophageal stricture. There are three causes. The three causes of a long esophageal stricture are lie, a nasogastric tube which has been left in place for prolonged use, or radiation. is the next differential diagnosis. The differential is for thickened esophageal folds. There are four causes. The causes for thickened esophageal folds are esophageal varices, 
a varicoid carcinoma, reflux esophagitis, or lymphoma. The next differential diagnosis. The differential is for a solitary esophageal mass. There are five causes. The differential diagnosis for a solitary esophageal mass include leiomyoma, an inflammatory polyp, carcinoma of the esophagus, a fibrovascular polyp, and a papilloma. This is the next differential diagnosis. The differential is for a gastric ulcer without mass. There are four causes. The causes of a gastric ulcer with no mass are H. pylori, aspirin-induced, Crohn's disease, and Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. This is the next differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis is for a target lesion in the GI tract. There are three main causes. The three main causes of a target lesion in the GI tract are hematogenous metastases from breast and lung, Kaposi sarcoma, and melanoma. Next, differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis is for thickened gastric folds. There are five main causes. The five main causes for thickened gastric folds are gastritis, hypertrophic or H. pylori, Menetrier's disease, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, varices, and lymphoma. Next differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis is for gastric non-distensibility. There are four main causes. The four main causes for gastric non-distensibility are carcinoma of the stomach, primary or metastatic, lymphoma, atrophic gastritis, or extensive scarring from peptic ulcer disease. The main causes for linitis plastica of the stomach are pancreatic tumor, lymphoma, amyloid, sarcoid or syphilis, tuberculosis, ingestive corrosives, and carcinoma of the stomach. is the next differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis is for gastric outlet obstruction. There are five main causes. The five main causes for gastric outlet obstruction are peptic ulcer disease, acute or chronic, carcinoma of the stomach, primary, metastatic, such as from the pancreas, gastric volvulus, an antral diaphragm or web, and in children, pyloric stenosis. Differential diagnosis. diagnosis is for gastric dilatation. There are five main causes. The five main causes of gastric dilatation are diabetes, electrolyte or acid base imbalance, neuromuscular disorder, abdominal surgery, or abdominal trauma.
Here is your next differential diagnosis. The differential is widening of the retrogastric space. There are four causes. Causes of widening of the retrogastric space are a pancreatic mass, a retroperitoneal mass not of pancreatic origin, such as a renal mass or cyst, an exophytic posterior wall gastric tumor, or an aortic aneurysm. This is the next differential diagnosis. The differential is for an antral pad sign. There are three main causes. The three main causes of an antral pad sign are pancreatic cancer, a pancreatic pseudocyst, or an enlarged or sometimes normal gallbladder. That concludes part one of differential diagnosis in gastrointestinal imaging. Reference and photos for this podcast are from Clinical Imaging, an Atlas of Differential Diagnosis, second edition by Ronald Eisenberg.